Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So, someone sent me an analogy trying to find a reason to <laughs> explain why infinity is not such a bad idea okay so here's the reasoning this person said take a sheet of paper with text on it place it on a wall stand within reading distance of the sheet of paper and then take a step back try to read it and you probably can still make out the text take another step back it's hard to read but you can still make out some of the text. Take yet another step back and you can no longer read the paper. So the conclusion is that you have just found your quote, virtual infinity for your eyes. And then if you keep going away from the paper, you don't lose any more ability to interpret the content. So this was a hand-waving method by a fraudulent mainstream lecturer in mathematics. Okay, and only a naive mind would fall for something like this. So let's see why this argument is wrong. It's actually very transparent. So it's fundamentally no different to Zeno's idea. For example, if you're going to try to cover a mile by only going half the distance of what remains, you'll never cover the mile. You'll never cover the distance of one mile, but you can do it in many other ways. You can do it in innumerable ma many other ways. So first of all, you can cover half a mile, then the other half a mile, or you can do three quarters of the mile, then a quarter of the mile, or you can do one eighth, then three eighths, then a half, and any other way you want to do it. So the idea is an attempt to make it appear as if the distance from the wall is analogous to infinity. In other words, comparable to infinity, but it's a smoke screen people. In many ways, in many ways, it smacks of Cantor's garbage theories, in particular, bijective cardinality. That is a bijection between you and the wall and infinity. You cannot scale infinity. And you can't say anything about the number of points on the line of fixed length. In fact, you can't even quantify all possible distances along a line. So virtual infinity is just another hand-waving expression for a fixed length from the wall. And if true, there are different levels of infinity as you move further away from the wall. Just more of Cantor's toxic ideas. Okay? So, the next question that was asked is, how do you deal with infinity in the Laplace chat? transform but you're not dealing with infinity in the Laplace transform so let me show you why you're not all you're doing is evaluating limits let's start off with a very simple function let f of t equal to e to the power of at okay so the Laplace transform of f of t is defined as Laplace of ft of this improper integral okay now we can, when we evaluate this integral, we're not evaluating a standard integral, which is a product of two arithmetic means. You cannot, you cannot ever evaluate an improper integral because there's no way you can take a sum to infinity. Okay. So how do these improper integral work? Improper integrals work very simply. They work because the antecedent or primitive function is evaluated using limits. Okay, so when we take the uh, antecedent of this function, e to the a minus s t, and we can only do it because it converges, okay? Because uh, uh, s is greater than a, all right? So let's see if we can do that now. I don't know why this isn't moving up. 
strange. Okay, so <coughs> this is a standard exponential integral and evaluating, you get this part down here, see, where you have uh, Laplace, um, come down here, you have the Laplace of this is simply the evaluation of e to the a minus s t over a minus s. Okay, so you're not doing anything with infinity there, right? You're simply considering what happens as t becomes very great or increases indefinitely, right? So ultimately, you get the transform to be 1 over s minus a, right? But you've really done nothing with infinity there. So uh, let's just shrink that a bit more and see if we can move that up. So the Laplace transform, <laughs> wrote transform wrong there, has nothing to do with infinity because it is an ill-formed concept. Infinity is an ill-formed concept. Ill -form concept. And for something to decrease indefinitely or increase indefinitely has nothing to do with infinity. Now, all this goes really back to the very first limit you learned about. Remember the limit of 1 over x as x increases indefinitely? That becomes 0. So this same idea is propagated in the bullshit of mainstream calculus, okay? Where you're actually equating a sum, an infinite sum, which is not possible, to its limit. Look, let's just pull up a GeoGebra page here. If you look at the function 1 over 1 plus x squared, like that, okay? Look at this function here. You cannot evaluate the area under this limit, uh, under this function, but you can find what the area converges to, okay? How do we know what it converges to? We know because this function here has an antecedent, and that antecedent is a tan x, okay? The red, this red colored function. And we know that this function has asymptotes there, which is pi over two, and an asymptote there, okay? So this function here, the red function, is the arctan function and we evaluate what happens as x increases indefinitely and x decreases indefinitely so what you what you end up doing here is uh, basically thinking that you're taking arctan of infinity and minus arctan of minus infinity you can't do this you can't put anything but a number in here do you understand that don't be a moron <laughs> Arctan infinity means that the limit, it means the limit of this red function as x increases indefinitely, you morons. You're not evaluating anything at infinity. Don't be fooled. Try to think and, and not simply absorb the utter crap that's spat out to you by your moronic lecturers, those unbelievable buffoons in the mainstream. So the horizontal lines are asymptotes because x is never equal to positive or negative infinity. Do you understand that? And by the way, they're asymptotes for a reason, meaning they never get there. That's what asymptote means. So also, look, in the Laplace transforms, you're always dealing with improper integrals. So a definite integral, as I've proved, is a product of two arithmetic means. If you take this function that I've just shown you in GeoGebra, you cannot find a arithmetic mean of all the vertical ordinates. There is no. And supposing you did, how on earth would you find the other arithmetic mean, which is the interval? Okay, so you have the arithmetic mean of all the y-ordinates of, of this green function multiplied by the entire x-axis, you, you can't do that. That's just senseless garbage. So what, what would the other arithmetic mean length be? The entire x-axis? 
Oh, my right eye is beginning to hurt terribly. Oh, wow. You cannot evaluate improper integrals as anything but limits. Okay. And the only reason that you know that the limit of the area under this curve here is pi is due to the fact that it has a primitive, which is the arc tan function, to which the limit can be applied. If you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber, click like, follow me on academia.edu. I do know better than anyone else on the planet. I am a genius. Uh, has it gotten me anywhere? <laughs> no. But that doesn't mean I'm not a genius. It just means that people are stupid and they do not understand these things. Okay. So that's all I have to say. Don't forget to click like. And I'll be chatting with you hopefully soon. Goodbye.